comment at this point? And I think the answer is no, but. We do not. We what? We don't have any comment at this time. Okay, okay thank you. Um, all right, so next up on the agenda, review of the minutes of the April 22nd meeting. Um, have we all received them and reviewed them? Yep, I uh, went through it. I don't have any changes. Anne, how about you? You're okay? Uh, I'm okay. I'm gonna abstain from them since I already let on that I didn't have a chance to read them. Okay, all righty. Um, Okay, so um, minutes are reviewed. I don't have any comments. Um, next item up is the textbook recommendations. Our vote on essentials. Hey. Yes, hey, sir. A, should we be voting on the minutes to accept them? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Jumping the gun. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Sorry. Accept. <laughs> I, uh, I move that we accept the minute, meeting minutes from the April 22nd, 2020 curriculum committee meeting. Okay, thank you, Tony. Um, I second. Um, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Anne, you abstain? Yeah, thanks. Okay. Okay, moving on. <laughs> um, the textbook recommendation title of the text is essentials of comparative politics with cases sixth ap edition mm -hmm. and um do i have a motion to accept the recommendation can i can i ask a question mm -hmm. yeah a question. are these the textbooks well, from from last from last month's meeting? Yes, yes, this is a continuation of the textbook recommendation from last meeting where Mr. Galvin presented um, on the textbook and we decided to move it to this meeting. Um, in addition, we've added two weeks for additional public comment following last, last month's meeting. Um, and just to recap, uh, the teachers have looked at a number of different texts and have spoken with teachers around the country who teach this particular full year AP course. Um, the course would cover approximately or would serve approximately 25 students. And um, we've since gotten some copies out to Faith and I think Faith, you were the only one who asked, but we have a different people would like to see those. Um, the process is such that it originates with the classroom teachers who teach the subject material. They go through a process of evaluating a number of different resources. Then they share that with their department chair, who's usually involved in that process as well. And then to Maureen Reed as the um, curriculum point person at the high school. It then comes to my office with Jeff's signature that passes to the Board of Education Curriculum Committee. At which point we need your um, you to forward it on to the Board of Education to at which point it will be voted on as to whether or not this would be the, the text to use in this particular course. I move that we forward this um, recommendation of the textbook to uh, the full board for approval. Okay, do I have a second? I second. Okay, discussion. Um, a quick question, Marlene, did, besides uh, Faith, was anybody else interested in getting a copy of the book or reviewing it? No, which, which is, you know, it's not unusual for that to happen. Um, what is the process for notifying the public that it's, that it's available other than the meeting? That is what is outlined in the policies that we, these are, these happen during curriculum. Um, we've had some special requests over the years to look at, um, I've done some presentations like with an online resource that we've had at T for TCI. Some of you remember that from years previous. And we've had sessions um, at different schools or at the Board of Education. And we've um, emailed out to parents and put it in uh, um principal newsletters that we were doing so. And even at that, 
um, have not gotten interest. <laughs> yeah, this on, this on policy is going to take up because it's we've been talking about this in the past. Somehow getting the word out better, and uh, so we'll, we'll get into policy, see if there's a better avenue. But you know, I'm of the mindset you can't communicate this enough. But you know, being as the virus, I'm pretty sure number one, people are not really coming to these meetings to, to look at our textbooks. And usually, when there's not a serious event going on, um, unless someone does attend a meeting, they don't know about it. So we're going to fix that. But the current the current policy is is faith. Okay, okay, thanks. And then Tim, if if you don't mind, can I just ask you a couple of questions about it? First of all, um, sure. Um, it's a for a textbook. It reads incredibly well. I really have to commend the authors on um, their style because we all know what textbooks can be like. Mm -hmm. um, and this is just for a course like this. Um, I'm just. A question I have is, is I know it's a year long course um, and the authors mention, for example, Montesquieu and Locke and, and um, Aristotle. I, I, is there any room for a reach, reading original source documents as they are also using the text to kind of understand where those authors in their different philosophies, their political philosophy, because I should think that would enrich their appreciation for these different forms of government. Sure, absolutely. So the, the text would be a, a starting point uh, for the course content. Um, and then, uh, you know, the teacher would be building beyond that and incorporating some primary source materials. Um, this class actually, though, just as a quick, uh, just so we have it uh, correct, is a, a semester class. So, um, which is unusual for APs, but it's how most schools handle this particular course. And we really want, we didn't want to shift from that because we wanted to encourage as much enrollment as this, in this as possible. And uh, the semester approach felt a little bit better for encouraging student enrollment. But um, so there, there will be some time for supplemental materials. Um, if you've probably had a chance to look at the case studies at the end. Um, that will, a, a lot of time and effort will go into those case studies and a comparative analysis between the six nations that it will be studied. Um, but as, as much supplemental material that the teacher can include, we'll try to capture that. Yeah. Um, as, as much as we can in a semester course. And, and the instructor will probably pick and choose uh, the areas where they feel like they can do a little bit of a deeper dive into some source materials like the ones you mentioned. Okay. And so the point of this course then is like an intro to comparative government. So that they, will, they, will they bypass say a 101 course or, or what's the intent with this? So these, stu these students will have taken either AP United States government or civics. Um, and so they will have a foundation in uh, government generally speaking, and then they'll be building on that within this coursework. Um, but then as, as far as the overall purpose of this course, um, it, it is very much, um, I mean, when you look at the, the textbook, it spends a good deal of time outlining some of the fundamental concepts in political science. So it will be taught very much as um, building off of what they've learned about American government um, mm -hmm. and then um, providing an introduction uh, to various uh, styles of government uh, around the globe with an emphasis on the six case study countries. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah. All right. That's, that, those were my primary questions that I had. Um, so I guess we're up for a vote. Um, so the motion on the floor is, um, sorry, I just lost my, oh, sorry. Just lost my agenda. Um, the motion on the floor is committee recommendation to full board of the new text, Essentials of Comparative Politics with Cases. 6 AP edition. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. It's moved. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Thank for letting you. me read that and review it. You bet. All right.
All right. Um, and we now move into informational items. So um, first up is grade three OLSAT results. Thank you. Two informational reports tonight. Um, one is the grade three uh, OLSAT report, very similar to the sixth grade report I believe we reviewed in January. Uh, we administer uh, the Otis Lennon School Ability Test, OLSAT, uh, to all grade three students Data from this test has really um, helped us determine either support or enrichment as needed for students on an individual basis. It is not um, uh, an assessment that relates back to our curriculum, but rather taps into student abilities, um, both from a, a oral uh, standpoint and a visual standpoint. You can see um, on the report um, that I believe was shared with you earlier, that our average OSAT score for um, the 246 students that were tested was 104. Um, that would 100, uh, score of 100 would be exactly at the 50th percentile. We were at the 55th percentile. That is um, slightly down from, from the previous years. Again, similar to the sixth grade, not anything that would be of uh, significant concern to us. Uh, the table below that shows our breakdown in each of the quartiles. Um, and again, if it was 25% in each of those boxes, that would be evenly split across the quartiles. And you can see that we're fairly close to that with uh, our largest chunk being in that third quartile, the 51st to 75th percentile. So again, really, this is an assessment that is used um, primarily at this age level as we're trying to um, decide what kind of supports an individual um, on the support end or enrichment in the student might need. It gives us one more uh, piece of information about that student and making those decisions. So that is the OLSAT report for this evening. Does anyone have any questions on those results? Okay, hey, sorry, no question. Just, uh, <clears throat> I should have checked earlier. I don't have access to those linked documents uh, for OLSAT and the others from our agenda, but uh, not urgent. I, I'm familiar with the results, but uh, you know, I I confess I don't either. So I was listening extra carefully. Do you, Kevin? I could you slap that for you right now? Oh, awesome! Thank you. All right, now there's no questions. All right. Um, for the next report, then um, I, I'm more than happy to share my screen if that helps at all um, in guiding through the report. Is that something that would be? Yeah, you're going to need yeah. to. Okay. Why don't I do that for uh, the last links report? If um, if Faith, if you are ready to move on to that report, let's move on. That's great. Okay, so give me just a second. Okay, is that um, successfully shared? Yes. Okay. You're up. Good deal. Okay, so on an annual basis, our English learners take the Lost Links uh, assessment. Um, this is a, a state requirement, and this uh, gives an overall indication of language proficiency. The score range on each area of assessment is a one through five, with high, five being the highest level of proficiency. Uh, for students to um, be exited from uh, being identified as an English learner, they must score uh, at least a four on the literacy portion, which is reading and writing combined, um, and an overall proficiency, um, and on the combined overall proficiency, they need to score four and above on that. So this year we had 51 uh, English learners that were assessed. As you can see, um, I'm now down in this section. <laughs> we uh, had several students who met the exit criteria, which is always a good thing, 10 overall, 20% for a student. And that simply means that they have met uh, language proficiencies that really will allow them to, to um, access a curriculum at a, at a proficient level. Um, we also have included below, trying to scroll slowly for you. Of the 51 students assessed, we had 33 of those students who took this assessment last year with us in Cheshire. Uh, the reason that number is down is we do have several students each year who exit um, 
needing uh, being identified as an English learner, so they wouldn't take it from one year to the next. We also have students moving in and out. So of our 51 students who took the assessment in Cheshire last year, you can see that a significant portion of students um, made gains from last year's assessment to this year's assessment, uh, with the low end being 71% of the students up to 88% of the students. We had also a good portion of the students make a full band of growth. So that's, that's moving from um, say be scoring at maybe a level one up to a level two or a level two to a level three. Um, the individual reports went out to these families in April. It was actually one of the last things we had prepared prior to um, our remote learning. Uh, we did pause on sending them out just a little bit until we got ourselves up and running, but these reports were mailed out to families uh, in April and it gives the individual results for each student as well as the indication of whether students will continue receiving PL support next year or whether they met the exit criteria. Uh, so that is a brief, let me see if I can stop presenting, a brief overview of our last link, links testing. Um, any questions from Ann or Tony? No? Um, Kevin, how long does it usually, usually take for, a, how many times does a student usually need to take the test to get to proficiency? There's, there's a wide range of, of answers in that. It really depends on, on so many different things. How, how much exposure um, does a student have to English prior to enrolling? Um, a typical benchmark would be five to seven years for a student to become fully proficient in a language. Um, we don't often see our youngest learners who maybe enter as ELs, as kindergartners, stay in as being identified EL that long um, because as a young learner who is exposed to English in a classroom setting for a, a period of time, um, they are picking up the language at, at a, at a pretty quick rate. And as they're learning early literacy skills, they're gaining that in the first language. But um, it can take up to five to seven years for a student to become fully proficient in a language. Uh, again, there are also other factors that come uh, into play, but I, I would use that as, as an average. Okay, and how do these numbers compare to previous years? So I actually don't have um, comparative data right at, at my fingertips um, for that. This is also something that the state using the last links in this way and this version of assessment is relatively, uh, relatively new. They've been doing it, I think, for uh, this version of it for about three years, and it's just now coming into our accountability index. Of course, just at the moment when they're doing that, they've waived that, that for this year. Um, but I think we're in about three years of this platform. I don't have um, all the historic data right at my fingertips, um, but I do know when meeting with uh, Pat Castle and Kristen Castellano at the elementary and middle school, uh, the number of students who uh, met the exit criteria and the number of students who showed band of growth were both, uh, they were both pleased with um, the progress that students had made on that. So that, that's the benchmark that I can, I can tell you tonight. Um, and I'm more than happy to go back and look to see um, okay. comparative, um, comparative data on that. But I know that we were pleased with the level of gain and level of proficiency. Okay, and that was going to be my follow up. If just a uh, almost a gut reaction to the numbers, if you, okay, yeah. all right, um, all right. Uh, next area of discussion: the remote learning feedback. Yes, I believe you all have access to this link. Tell me if you do not. Yes. Okay. So about. Two weeks ago, it was on the 29th of April, we sent a survey out to our students, much like we did to our parents and our teachers. And um, we had 763 mm. responses, not really what I was hoping for. Now I believe people when they say that our students don't like to check their email, that they're much more apt to use things in an app. So I, I can appreciate that. Um, we had a, a similar representation between 8 and 12 percent 
from all of our grades across grades three through 12. And some of the things that we asked them about were, um, you know, how has your transition to remote learning been? And again, we kind of put that into three buckets. Was it challenging? 18% said yes. Was it manageable? 66% said it was manageable. Or was it easy? And about 22% said that it was easy. When we asked about, we were, we were trying to get at what this next question was, how can we take this information to help students? And what kinds of things do we want our teachers to know? Because this is all, this environment is very new. And the question was, how clear are the expectations and directions for what you need to do in remote learning? So a teacher who is used to giving so much orally to now have to translate that into written assignments, we wanted to see how that was going. And so 53, 54% said that it was clear. 43% said that it was somewhat clear. So we're looking at, let's see, 96, 97% um, saying it was clear or somewhat, and then not clear was that um, under 5% remainder. So we took that information to our teachers to help them um, better communicate. Uh, how easy has it been to make contact with your teacher? 60% said it was fairly easy. 36% said somewhat. And then the rest said not, not easy. It's, it's been difficult. Um, some of the feedback from the, from the teachers was that this is difficult for everyone in that you're used to getting your, you raise your hand or your teacher's right there moving around the room, moving around the room, giving on the spot feedback. Um, and this certainly is more difficult. If I have a question at two o'clock and I send an email to my teacher, she may have a list of you know, other emails that she's responding to. So that's gonna take a little, little more time. So we're thinking that that may have been where some of the, um, you know, some of the challenges. Most of the correspondence I have had with my teachers is, uh, we're trying to get make an idea of where are they spending the most time? How much of this is about feedback? How much of this is about an assignment? And how much of it is other? And we found that the technology was only a small, small sliver. Um, 65, 66% was about an assignment, which we think would probably be on target. And then 22% is about feedback on something they've done. What we're looking at now is um, digging into how can we help our teachers to provide feedback in the digital world, in this remote world. So as we think about next year, as we think about the rest of these weeks, as we think about professional development, um, our team has been looking at ways in which teachers can provide feedback to students in, in as much um, of a, a, you know, to cut down on the time limit of that as possible. So that's an area of focus for us. Most of my correspondence with my teacher has been knowing exactly what to do with, with an assignment. Um, and then we have, I'm sorry, this is, this is not clear. Um, so we, again, polled, polled students and a lot of them, it was about assignments, 66, 60, 66%. 22.7% um, was, I'm not seeing that here. I apologize, I'll have to get you that. I'm looking at the same PDF you are, and it's not as interactive as, as my document. So I'll have to pop into my document. The next question was about um, connectedness. We are very worried that kids aren't feeling connected, that we want to make sure we're providing them opportunities to be connected. So you've heard a lot about videos. You've heard a lot about the individual Google Meets and some telephone calls. So when it said, the question asks, while I'm not physically attending school with my teachers and classmates through remote learning, I feel totally connected, which was 12.3% of students. So a, the smallest number, somewhat connected over 70% and then not at all connected 17.2%. So our hope is that with additional, um, with the addition of the cameras that this really lends itself more to kids feeling connected with their teacher and with others. And while I'm looking for the answer to that other question for you, because I really need to find out what that 22.7% is, do you have any questions for me? Uh, 
Um, Marlene, thank you, no questions. Uh, I think some of this was reviewed Thursday night uh, too. So are these, these, so Thursday night was the parent survey. Right, and just the students. Survey. So it, it, I mean, the reason I'm familiar is it seems some of the percentages more or less correlated. I think almost as what some of the parents were saying in terms of responses, it was too much, too little, just right. So it's nice to see that consistency, I think. Uh, moving forward, if, if we continue to do more online learning in the fall, uh, depending on what happens, then we'll see. I would try to find other ways to solicit more feedback from the students. You know, it's, it'd be nice to have them all. I know it's tough. I, I'm pretty sure my daughter won't really respond unless there's an app. Um, <laughs> I'll get the emails it is. Uh, but, you know, we probably should look for ways to engage in more, but that's, uh, that's for later on. Yeah, Tony, that's a, that's a great point. I envision um, us having an additional survey before the close of this year, um, specifically around planning for next year. And what I'm thinking is um, asking for the teacher's help in that and sort of having it, you know, not as part of an assignment, but here, I'm going to give you five minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> please do, you know, please do this, um, then I think we can get an increase in the number. At that point in time, we didn't really want to put another requirement on them, but exactly. yeah. going forward, I think we're, we we might need to to go. Yeah, there. especially if they help the teams help, you know, help themselves, I think they wouldn't mind that, but it's understandable not putting more on that right now. So but anyway, that was it. Anyway, thank you. Okay. Well, I don't want to hold you up. I'm going to continue to look at this. I, pardon me if I'm so close because I'm looking at my tabs at the top. Um, the next item that um, we we put on the agenda was the Memorial Day music events. Um, and I invited John Kuhner to be here with us tonight because he had a really great idea that he had shared with Jeff and I um, as something that we could do in lieu of um, the Memorial Day Parade. So it's not going to be a parade, but I'm going to turn it over to John so he can tell you a little bit about what he and his music department are working on. Thanks, Marlene. Good evening, everyone. It's good to see all of you. Um, in isolation, these are the one time, uh, this is the one time that we can connect and it's, I appreciate that opportunity. I want to share my screen real quick here. Let's see if I can do that here. Got too, too many things here in my computer. I'm using one monitor. Yeah. All right. Let's see if uh, you're seeing a PowerPoint now. Yes. Yep. There it is. All right. Okay. We'll put you in the mood here, put the American flag up. We'll think positive thoughts for uh, Memorial Day. And um, as we're uh, looking at that, um, well, the music department uh, came up with an idea. And actually, this this came from uh, another colleague of ours that uh, is, is happens to be a parent here in town who's uh, engaging in a similar project in their town. But uh, what, uh, what we'd like to do is um, present a Memorial Day performance. And um, this will obviously will be honoring the memory of the brave men and women who died while protecting our freedom and serving our country. And um, it'll be a solemn performance, but it will also be uh, a coming together uh, of our students and community. Um, the uh, music department will engage in a unique performance um, on su uh, Sunday, May 24th, 1.30 p.m which is the date and time of the Cheshire Memorial Day Parade. And that would have stepped off right at 1.30. And we're encouraging all of our K-12 music students who are members of their school's band, orchestra, chorus, and general music classes to perform in, uh, patriotic selections uh, from their front porch or front yard starting at 1.30 p.m. Um, parents will be encouraged to take videos and photos and share them with their music teachers in hopes uh, that we hope to put this together. In fact, I'm gonna to talk to Mike Salamini after this uh, meeting, uh, send him an email to see if he might be able to help us with this, uh, to put together a video collage to be shared out for all to enjoy. And participating students and parents will be asked to follow all local state and federal regulations and guidance regarding COVID-19 precautions 
including social distancing and limits on public gatherings. Uh, so we would like students to stay in their in their front part, the porch, their front yard, and so on. Um, we will post accompaniment tracks along with the instrumental parts and lyrics for students to use uh, and learn and then perform the musical selections. Uh, all will be able to open up the video or audio files and play them or sing along um, with the accompaniment tracks and that'll all start at 1.30. Uh, all the links will be up there. There isn't going to be a timed sequence, but um, you know, students can't, we'd like them to start at about 1.30 on that Sunday if possible, so that uh, it'll be a community type event. And the rain date for that will be Monday the 25th at the same time. Um, the program will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance and we're looking to reach out to our Cheshire Boy Scouts. Uh, if any of you have um, direct contacts with those folks, uh, if you could pass those on to me, I'd appreciate it. I know some, some parents that are affiliated with the, the Scouts, but uh, would like to make sure that uh, we're connecting with everyone that we need to. Um, and hopefully that'll be a video of, of the Pledge of Allegiance by our Scouts, um, followed by the National Anthem. Um, right now, Grace Azula, senior Cheshire High School student who um, uh, has done quite a bit in the choral program, will be sing, singing that. And um, Greg uh, Bell has put together the accompaniment to go along so people can sing with that recording. So that'll be a video. Actually, actually, I'm sorry, that'll be an audio. Um, after that, um, the first ensemble piece will be America the Beautiful, and that is for all students to participate in K-12. So that's the one piece that everyone is going to be teaching in their lessons. In fact, uh, that has already begun in some classes uh, already. And then additional pieces, optional pieces uh, to be performed, Yankee Doodle, You're a Grand Old Flag. I know some elementary schools are working on those pieces. Um, and our string uh, students, our elementary strings, are working on Yankee Doodle. And uh, then the five military service songs are also there, uh, the melodies of those. And we thought it was important to include those in case uh, students wanted to learn those, especially if they had uh, a relative or uh, someone that they knew uh, who might have passed or, or, or currently serves in one of those branches uh, to be able to perform that. And then the last part of it will be TAPS. And that'll be performed uh, either a video or an audio by one of our uh, Cheshire High School senior trumpet players. Uh, I've reached out to John White, um, who, as all of you know, is a member of the Cheshire Veterans Council. And he fully supports this project. Uh, and it matches up really well with what he and the Veterans Council are planning to do over the weekend. On Monday at 2 o'clock on the 25th, on Memorial Day, uh, the Veterans Council is planning to hold a ceremony followed by a military flyover of Cheshire. Um, John said he would try to incorporate our student recordings of the Pledge of Allegiance uh, and the National Anthem and the accompaniment track to America the Beautiful. And I think we're going to try and have a, a soloist sing that as well so he can actually use that recording in the ceremony. And then, of course, taps at the end of the service. And... Um, he really supports this project, thinks it's, it's, it's great, and he appreciates the student engagement honoring the spirit of Memorial Day. So we think it's a great project for our faculty, uh, K-12, all of our students to do something together, uh, since I know students are missing that performance that uh, we normally would have. In fact, uh, um, last week would have marked our spring concert um, at Cheshire High School, and, and we missed having that performance very much. I know our seniors have, so um, we're, we're hoping that uh, uh, students will have that opportunity to perform, not together, but in spirit, um, uh, performing together. So uh, if any of you have any questions, uh, certainly ask away. Thank you. I don't have a question, but can I just respond? Oh, absolutely. So I think it's remarkable. I'm so glad that you're doing this. And uh, I know how much, how important music is to the education process as a whole. And so uh, it's fantastic that you've come up with a way to get the students back into their music practices and lessons, because it's, it's so important to many, many of our students in, in the district. So thank you yeah. for thinking outside Absolutely. the box in these tough times. Absolutely, and um, I know students really miss playing together. Uh, yeah. We have a lot of solo assignments and, and um, they really miss that, that experience of that ensemble. So um, this is not an ensemble experience, but 
uh, it is something we can share together and and uh, and it's a real positive thing for for all of us to be a part of so thank you i just like to echo ann's comments i i have the privilege of living across the street from juliana distante and um I can't wait to hear her sing. So I hope she's, I, I assume she's participating, but. Well, I mean, you can encourage students to participate, right? Just as long as they don't, uh, you know, get too close to someone else, so. Right, that's right. not a problem. <laughs> From a distance, yeah. But thank you. Absolutely, you're welcome. And um, these arrangements, by the way, everyone can sing along. So you could you could sing along also, and other people Ooh. in the community. Um, the, the parts will be there for people to open up. They're PDFs. They're very simple to follow along. We've got the, the text right underneath the notes. Uh, Greg Bell is uh, putting down some uh, nice accompaniment tracks for us to be able to follow and uh, have every, everyone in the community sing along if they'd like to. I just want to say thank you as well, John. I love the idea. I think uh, neighborhoods are going to enjoy this as well, it's gonna be a bright spot in their days. And, and I'm sure for the kids just being out there playing, you know, from the heart, it's, it's always a, right. a great for them. Uh, you're a busy guy normally without some kind of a virus going on. And yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so thank you for helping us together and coordinating it. I just wondering uh, with transitioning to online learning, if that's actually helped you or, or, or not in terms of maybe you'll spend some more time with the kids online, I, I'm not sure how, the online instruction has been working for most kids. I know my my daughter's been fine with it, but I hope it gives you a little more time with the, with the kids a little bit. Well, yeah, that's very interesting because uh, normally my classes are 60 to 120, as you know, um, and this is very different. And so yeah. being able to connect one on one, there is something to be said about that. And I really appreciate that. Um, yeah. But on the other hand, it'd be great to have a little bit of both. Uh, if we yep. could to have rehearsals back as well and it's it's, it's especially for students who uh, might not be as motivated to engage in that practice because you know it's work practicing yeah. is work um and being able to have that that experience of that ensemble it's it, i know that everyone's missing that so um and another marching band folks that i mean the kids are wondering what's going to happen and and i've been talking to steve trafone about uh uh, what's happening with athletics and we're planning accordingly to, to be able to do whatever we need to do to, to be able to adjust so yeah well great anyway thank you for helping out through all this i know it's uh, not easy in normal times but again I appreciate it. thank you okay um anyone have any other questions or comments thanks so much um absolutely thank ask, all of you thank you for your support can I yes ask a yep question so how do how do we the members of the, just the general public how do we find out about it and how do we get the link and how is that going to be advertised because i want to sing yeah. from my front porch <laughs> yeah we're going to try and post that i'm going to speak with kelly lens um if i can't connect tomorrow in the next couple of days to see what we can do to get a press release out and also put put a link up maybe on the cheshire public schools webpage to the files uh, because they are folders. Um, the arrangements, um, we've, we don't have absolute permission to make these arrangements, but they are not full arrangements. So I think it will be okay. Um, we don't want to violate WhatsApp. any copyright rules. No, no. Um, but it's just the melody. They're, they, you know, the accompaniment uh, is not going to be shown. We'll just post the parts. So um, I think I we'll like be okay with that. Yeah. Well. I'm sorry. Okay. Love to hear Ann sing as well that day so <laughs> post it in yeah to share the video with us <laughs> i'll have to get somebody to videotape me yeah <laughs> but you know if we could get the details we can put it on the education forum we could also get it on the community forum and just okay. continually hit it and make sure it stays up there mike oh. i can work with kelly to get that on social media too we can put that on all our social channels Thank you. Maybe not the content of the music, but um, the information. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Things. Right. Um, we've been putting a lot on social these days. So I can work with Kelly on that if you share uh, the info. Yeah, if we're concerned about the copyright, I was thinking we could just uh, share it internally with anyone with the Cheshire um, Public Schools domain uh, in that way, too. So we'll get the word out. Yep. Very good. Good. Thank you. Absolutely, thank you. And then um, last item is behind the scenes of Cheshire Public Schools.
during the closure. So that's actually a great segue as Mike and John are talking about how we're going to get the word out because we've been working on um, a way to convey to folks what's been happening because while our campuses are closed, our schools are certainly up and running in every conceivable way. And so we thought we'd start with um, a small group and then expand out to our, our full um, faculty. But we've got a couple of videos and I thought I would share just one tonight to give you a taste of what you'll see on social media from the Cheshire Public Schools. And so if you give me a minute, I will present my screen. And this video that I'm about to show you is of our one of our teachers who serves as our technology integration specialist. You've probably heard me mention Scott Conway's name before. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So here's a taste of what behind the scenes uh, of Cheshire Public Schools during campus closure will be looking like. Hi, I'm Scott Conway. I'm a technology integration specialist and data and software administrator for Cheshire Public Schools. It was seven weeks ago today that I moved out of the basement of central office and into the basement of my home where I set up my makeshift office. And I have continued to work from here every day to support the over 600 faculty and staff and the over 4,400 students and their parents with all of the software and hardware demands that they now have in this new remote learning environment. And I think one of the best things to Come out of all of this was the establishment of a daily live stream. I have been providing at 1230 every day a lunchtime live stream for our faculty and staff to learn more about some of the platforms and the core software uh, suite that we use in the district on a daily basis. And it just gives them a chance to either learn something new or enhance their knowledge of one of these platforms. And it's been a, a, a wonderful time, a stressful time, and I just hope that we can continue to support the staff and students in the way that we have. Okay, so we have a number of those um, set to roll. We have a lovely one by Amy O'Brien, who, as you all know, is the Doolittle School Principal, where she talks about how she spent her day setting up uh, class lists and cultivating classrooms for next year, making, and I won't go into it. I'll show you that. That one's coming next, but um, th those are just some examples of what these little behind the scenes glimpses look like so folks know what's happening during the campus closure. And I did find that piece of information from that survey, the 20% was feedback. So I'm sorry that you couldn't see it on your PDF. Any questions? So these videos are gonna be on the website and well, they'll be on all of our social media outlets. Right. So they'll be on Instagram and Facebook and um, I'm not sure what's the other, tw Twitter. Actually, they already are. They've been running uh, last several days, like probably the last week. Um, I got a couple hundred views of, per video. Okay. Um, Ann or Tony, do you have any questions or comments or? No, nothing really related to the agenda. I, I thought tonight was great. Nice to see the results from the testing. Love, love the presentation of John Cooner. Uh, can't wait for Memorial Day neighborhood. Um, I'm not sure what the word is I'm looking for, but we had a few in our street. I can't wait. It'd be nice. It'd be refreshing to hear for kids play out there playing. Um, I, so nothing to the agenda. I just going to ask, when do we think? Oh, this is really probably for Jeff if he didn't fall asleep after quite so much needed rest uh, for during this period. But when do we think we'll have some ideas for graduation for high school, and middle school? Um, sure. In a couple of meetings, do you guys think it'll be end of end of May, if sooner? Just kind of get a ballpark. I don't have a lot of questions. I know it's a work in progress. I'm not going to hold you anything. I'm just kind of curious. Sure. Who you guys yeah. are what we've been doing is analyzing or 
basically trying to create every possible scenario, which is time consuming um, and, and challenging. But, you know, for example, I think I shared last week, we were chasing down the movie theater, see if we could use that as an option, the uh, drive-in theater in Southington. Unfortunately, we can't, you know, what we're waiting for right now is guidance from the governor um, because things, you know, kind of change a little bit and we don't want to put out options to our students and to the community, our parents, that really we can't fulfill because of a governor's order. So for example, like last week, I know the kids in my house were excited to hear that summer camps would be on. And then today there was kind of clarification on that, that, well, not sleepaway camps, it's only day camps with like 30 or less kids. And so, you know, we want the actual directive to come from the governor, it should come this week, and um, once we have that, our plan is to survey, survey our senior students and parents about what options we, we can kind of do. And it, obviously the preference is to do as much as we can in person with the group. So, you know, certainly one of the options will be pushing it back uh, later into the summer or fall, but we're trying to get some guidance from the state as to when that could be. Got it. Yeah, just curious. I'm, I'm sure you get the same meals I'm getting. And that sure the middle school and uh you know the elementary promotion ceremonies are a little bit different well you know they're they're both worthwhile it's a little bit different than a culminating graduation ceremony so you know that's more likely to be virtual in nature got it thank you jeff sure jeff along those lines have you um is there any any feedback or any um, advancement on what's going on with the play also are they yeah like the uh, graduation we're still waiting for state guidance around when people can actually get together mm -hmm. um, they're still saying like a gathering of more than five people would be you know through the end of the month or uh, end of next month so uh, unfortunately, that would kind of call off the play at this point, to that point, uh, to the end of end of June. So we're hopeful that that'll change and that our our students um, will still have the interest and flexibility to be able to pull something off. And if I can just add, students are recording some of their pieces to be able to show it virtually. So that will be available and they're trying to adapt to this environment. Um, and back to graduation, we've had I sent something out today that I think was posted um, on Facebook and um, that, that just indicates the timeline of how we've been communicating with students, with PTO, with our, our folks, just, just to, trying to involve everyone. But like Jeff said, uh, to put out specific options until we know what we know uh, gets complicated. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, on that note, uh, Mary, just, again, thank you all for, I mean, not just obviously working through this virus situation, but but just the planning of graduation and year and activities. I know it's more than it's graduation. There's a textbook drop off, pick up, uh, clean out the lockers, there's a slew of things you sent out. I thought the letter you sent out uh, to us parents of the high school on Friday, you know, listen to a lot of that stuff. So I know it's not easy, but thank you. so thank you. And I think you guys are doing the right thing by not getting specifics yet until you know what you know. So. No one can fault you for that. But again, thank you for your help on this. And then just too generally, your level of communication has been great. And um, I- hey, if you're talking, you're on mute. I shouldn't be. I can no. hear you. I hear her. Or maybe it's me. <laughs> Wishful thinking, Tony. <laughs> uh, just just commending them on their on their communication with the town and um, the community that's all or, or the uh, school community but that's all thank you um have we gotten any comments coming in i'll double check again but we hadn't recently no. <laughs> i can't believe they're not spending their monday nights with us wow i don't blame them I don't either. And on that note, um, so moved. I didn't <laughs> offer it yet. <laughs> 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 
All right. Um, second. I second. Discussion. <laughs> All in favor. Aye. 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 All right. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank, thank you. Everyone. Very thank much. You. Everybody. Okay. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. Marlene, I need